Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks with Valley Ridge. The purpose of today's video is to teach you how to make your own knockdown target on a hinge, just like this. You know, I've looked all over the internet and I wanted some knockdown targets that you didn't have to go back and like find on the ground. I wanted one with a hinge. I couldn't find one, at least any with decent target dimensions. So I decided to make my own and uh, it's worked pretty good so far. And so I wanna teach you how to do that step by step. And at the finished product, looks something just like that where you hit it with the pistol falls right on over, no problem. So let's get started. So what you'll need before you begin is you're gonna need your drill. You can either use a half inch bit or less. I like to use this one because it allows for a bolt of any type. Uh, you will need a, a cordless drill as well. I like to use the star bit. You'll need a ratchet set for your bolts. And of course some screws. I like to use those three inch, three or four inch screws. Three inch will work just fine. Uh, what you'll also need is a two by four, as you can see right here, you can get these at Lowe's for less than five bucks. And a, a door hinge, just like that. And once again, these are like six, seven bucks at Lowe's. They're not anything at all. So the first thing we need to do is you'll need a target stand uh, to set this two by four. And as you can see right here, I got this one. This one's from Cabela's. Although you can make your own or you could even drive them straight in the ground, whatever you wanna do. I just like to have target stands for when I pick them up and move them around. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this hinge in the 2x4 and I'm going to start up here with my impact driver. Let's drive it straight down. And what you're going to want to make sure is that this thing moves free because it's going to need to be as loose as possible so that the steel will knock over. So that works well just like that. What you'll also notice on the back here is that I put a stopper for the target so that when it gets knocked over, it will stop and it won't mess with your hinge, it won't bend it, it won't wear it out. It'll stop right on top of there. So you can just cut a 45 degree piece and then drive some screws in. You can see I got that one right in there. So just drive them straight in. I'm not gonna teach you how to do that. You all should know that if you're a dude. All right guys, what you also need besides a two by four is just a real long piece of pine board and not the, not the plywood or the MDF or any of that stuff. You want actual pine board just like this. It's a, I think there's a quarter or a half inch, but it's real thin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw that to this hinge right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I like to use these real small screws, these little wood screws. You, they come with the hinge, that's the good thing. So you can just use it. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drill right into here. We're gonna put this in, make sure it's up all the way. Now when you're doing this folks, a tip that'll help you is we want this to be as upright as we can, because I want that plate to be forward on this, all right? So make sure you're just gonna have to play with it and see what works. But for right now, I'm just gonna drive these in here. Okay, good, awesome. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drill my steel plate. The steel I'm using, in case you're wondering, is a Mike Gibson Manufacturing MGM. I'm using the 3 8 This is an eight by eight square. They make different sizes. I like the square. It comes with nice two pre-cut holes right there. Um, so what we're gonna do is drive our drill into the back of the brace right here. I like to have mine slightly tilted back, guys, because if not, it'll be real hard to knock over. So just a slight tilt back, and we're just gonna drive it straight through. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Make sure your fingers are clear of the drill. All right, good. Now it's time to mount the steel to the brace. So put it down here. You could use either a carriage bolt or a hex bolt. It really doesn't matter. A tip though, if you're gonna use these bolts, make sure they're grade eight or, or better. You know, you get some of the regular steel bolts and they're gonna get eaten up by your pistol. Uh, grade eights last a lot longer, they're a lot more durable. So make sure you're getting those. What I'm doing is dropping them right in there like that. And this one down like that. Now, what you also need is a washer. You can either get a flat washer or split, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use this smaller washer and I'm gonna turn it around so you can see. I'm just gonna put it right back there. You may have to clear out some of the wood from the drilling so that it lays flat, no big deal. I'm gonna put the washers right on there. 
And what I've got here is a lock nut. It's got some nylon in the screws so that it will lock down. So we're just going to put it on. All right, what I'm gonna use my ratchet. So what I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm going to take my ratchet and tighten it down. Now, once that washer starts sinking into the wood and you hear hearing it crunch, stop. Because uh, if not, you're gonna break your wood and it won't be useful. One more. All right, that's good right there. So, what we have is a steel target that when you hit it, theoretically, it will get knocked over like that. So let's go ahead and shoot this and see how it does. All right, what I do to test these is I like to shoot it as low on the plate as I can get it without hitting the wood or the hinge. The reason I'm gonna hit it as low as possible is because that's a worst case scenario hit, and that's the hardest hit to actually knock it over. There's almost zero leverage. So I know that if I shoot it on the bottom of the plate, the very bottom, and it still knocks over, I'm good for anywhere else on the plate. If you're shooting steel, I highly recommend not shooting it closer than eight yards. Some places will tell you 10, some places will tell you 12. You know, I, I've, I've shot steel at, at seven yards before and it was just fine, but I, I wouldn't shoot it any closer than, than eight or seven yards for sure. So let's give this a whirl and see how she does. I'm gonna try to put it right in between those bolts. Worst case scenario hit and still knock it over. If you found the information helpful, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Facebook, that link is down below. And if you wanna get some training on your pistol, come on out to Valor Ridge and we can do just that for you. This is Reed Hendricks with Valor Ridge reminding you, the lessons that we learn written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.